Hey guys, it's Sabrina, and I'm here to report on the research that we did as a class over the course of the semester. So, um, as you guys know, as a class, we decided to focus on the uh, relationship between smartphone use and psychological well-being. And so, in order to do this, we performed two separate studies. The first was to establish a correlational uh, relationship between psychological well-being and smartphone use. So basically deciding whether or not there was even a relationship. And after doing that, um, we performed a second study that was in an attempt to establish a causal relationship between the two. So um, what exactly was causing either psychological well-being or uh, the way that it was affected by smartphone use. So um, the first study, my research question was, um, just asking whether or not there even was a relationship and I hypothesized that there would be a relationship and that it would be a negative one meaning that um, as smartphone use increased negative affect would or psychological well-being would decrease creating a negative relationship between the two variables so in order to do this um, we performed a study using participants that we recruited from our social media websites um, and the survey basically asks various questions about psychological well-being and also smartphone use. And we also uh, differentiated between passive smartphone use and active smartphone use. Active smartphone use um, was were things like communicating with others, taking pictures, playing games, things like that that are like active use of your smartphone. And passive smartphone use was defined as like checking your phone, using it as an alarm, checking notifications um, on your lock screen, things like that that don't require so much actual use of your smartphone. So we asked questions pertaining to how people use their smartphones and how often they use them. And what we found from that survey was that there was in fact a relationship between the two variables and that um, the number of hours of smartphone use was positively correlated with negative affect. So as smartphone use increased, so did negative affect, which um, these findings actually did support my hypothesis um, in that I, or I hypothesized that um, there would be a negative relationship between smartphone use and psychological well-being. So as smart smartphone use um, increased, uh, psychological well-being would decrease, which is where we get that negative affect finding in our first study. So after finding that there was a um, relationship between the two variables, we wanted to try to establish um, a causal relationship. So. Um, in order to do that, in the second study, we um, asked how a lack of smartphone use would affect positive affect, negative affect, and life satisfaction. So to, in order to study that, um, we performed a study where we recruited participants, those participants being ourselves, our teacher, and our TA, um, and we took a questionnaire about life satisfaction then we went 24 hours without using our smartphones, and then we took that uh, same exact survey again, asking about life satisfaction to gauge whether or not not using our smartphones would affect our life satisfaction in any way. I hypothesized that 24 hours wouldn't be enough time to affect anyone's life satisfaction enough uh, to have a significant finding, um, but actually what our findings told us were that um, we actually did find um, relationships between not or no we didn't find um, we actually did find that not using our smartphones created uh, or caused more people to report a higher positive affect and not using our smartphones for 24 hours caused people to uh, report lower negative affects. So in a 24 hour span, we actually were able to establish that people's life satisfaction went up because of a lack of use of smartphone, which is really interesting. Um, between the two studies, 
there were some uh, strengths and limitations. One of the strengths of our first study was that um, we had so many participants. So it was really representative, or we at least can assume that a high popul or a high sample is representative of a high or of the actual population that exists. Um, that was also a limitation of our second study was that because we only uh, surveyed ourselves, we only studied ourselves, there was, um, it was a small sample size, which can be a limitation in a study. It's not as representative of the ap actual population. Um, another strength of our s second study is that it was able to establish a causal relationship, whereas our correlational uh, study, the first study that we did, wasn't able to establish a causal relationship. Um, so where a strength lied in study two, it was uh, able to kind of uh, fill in a gap that we had in our study one, if that makes sense. So um, to conclude, I guess I think that overall our findings were really significant, especially uh, because of the fact that we weren't able to spend a great deal of time on any of our studies. Um, but I think that overall our findings were significant and they were really telling of the relationship between smartphone use and psychological well-being. And I only hope that um, there will be more research on uh, the way that the two are related and maybe uh, more longitudinal studies uh, will be tested in the future. So yeah, that's what I've got on the research over the course of the semester. Over and out, guys.